Mastering silence, transform your English conversations. Hey Nicole, have you ever noticed how powerful silence can be in a conversation? Hi Charles. That's an interesting point. I think most people underestimate silence, seeing it as awkward or unnecessary. Exactly. But silence can actually give us time to think and reflect on what's being said, don't you think? Definitely. It allows for a deeper understanding and, sometimes, conveys more than words themselves. But in learning English, how can we use silence effectively? One way is by taking a brief pause before responding. It shows you're considering your words carefully, which can be very respectful in many cultures. I see. And it might also give the speaker a sign that you're genuinely interested in what they're saying. But, isn't there a risk of overusing it? For sure, too much silence might make you seem disinterested or even shy. It's all about finding the right balance. Speaking of balance, using silence can also help non-native speakers process their thoughts in English, right? Absolutely. It gives you a moment to organize your thoughts and find the words you want to use. Plus, it can help control the pace of the conversation. That makes sense. And I guess in more emotional conversations, silence can be a way to show empathy or give space to the other person. Right. It's like saying, I'm here for you, without actually saying it. Sometimes, that's more powerful than any words. Agreed. It's fascinating how something as simple as silence can add so much depth to communication. I'll definitely try to incorporate it more thoughtfully into my conversations. Same here. It's a skill worth mastering, especially in a new language. Thanks for the chat, Nicole. Thank you, Charles. It was a great conversation, as always. See you around. Nature's Call, Unplugging and Discovering the Joy of Mountain Camping Hi everyone, I'm Charles, and this is Bianca. Today, we're talking about something really exciting mountain camping. That's right, Charles. There's nothing quite like setting up a tent in the mountains, surrounded by nature. It's a chance to unplug from our busy lives. Absolutely, Bianca. Let's start with the basics. First, you need a good tent. It's your home away from home, so make sure it's comfortable and waterproof. Yes, and don't forget a sleeping bag. The nights in the mountains can be cold even in summer. A warm sleeping bag is essential. Good point. Now, what about food? You can't just order a pizza out there. Definitely not, Charles. Bring easy-to-cook meals and snacks. And remember, you must carry everything out, so pack light and avoid waste. Right. Keeping the mountains clean is crucial. Which brings us to campfires. They're a big part of the camping experience, but safety first, right Bianca? Exactly, Charles. Only make a fire in designated areas and keep water nearby in case it needs to be put out quickly. Never leave it unattended. Safety always comes first. And speaking of safety, let's not forget a first aid kit. It's a must-have for any outdoor activity. Indeed. And let's talk about enjoying the mountains responsibly. Stay on marked trails to protect the plant life and wildlife. 
That's a great point. We're visitors in their home. Now, Bianca, what's your favorite part of camping in the mountains? Oh, it's got to be the stars, Charles. Away from city lights, you can see so many stars at night. It's truly magical. I couldn't agree more. For me, it's the peace and quiet. It's so refreshing to wake up to the sound of birds instead of traffic. Absolutely, Charles. And for our viewers thinking about trying mountain camping, we say, go for it. It's a wonderful way to connect with nature and recharge. But remember, preparation is key. Make sure you have the right gear, plan your trip carefully, and always respect nature. Well said, Charles. We hope this conversation inspires you to explore the beauty of mountain camping. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tips on embracing the great outdoors. See you next time. Happy camping, everyone. Stay safe and cherish the beauty of nature. Unlocking Mysteries, The Art of Deduction in Everyday Life Hi everyone, I'm Charles. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of detective stories and how these narratives can teach us valuable skills for our daily lives. And I'm Linda. It's incredible how much we can learn from detective characters, like observation and deduction. Let's explore how we can use these skills outside of the books. Exactly, Linda. Let's start with Sherlock Holmes, known for his keen observation. How can we apply his observational skills in real life? Well, observation is about noticing the little details. For example, if you're meeting someone for the first time, paying attention to their body language can tell you a lot about how they're feeling. That's a great point. It's about being present and mindful of our surroundings, which can help us in understanding situations better. Now, what about deduction? Sherlock was a master at that too. Deduction is about connecting the dots. In real life, it could be as simple as figuring out why traffic is more congested than usual. Maybe there's construction work or an event happening nearby. Absolutely, Linda. It's about using the information you've observed to make informed guesses. Now, let's not forget Hercule Poirot, another iconic detective. He was all about understanding human nature. Yes, understanding people is crucial. It can be useful in resolving conflicts or even in our work lives, like anticipating a client's needs based on previous interactions. True. It's about empathy and insight. Now, considering our viewers are keen on improving their English, how can reading detective stories help with that? Reading detective stories can immensely improve vocabulary and comprehension. The narrative keeps you engaged, making learning new words and phrases much more enjoyable. Plus, Trying to solve the mystery yourself before the detective does is a fun way to engage with the text. It encourages critical thinking and attention to detail. Absolutely, Charles. For our viewers, we recommend starting with short stories or ones written for language learners. They're entertaining and educational. To wrap up, whether you're unraveling a mystery in a book or facing a challenge in real life, the skills of observation, deduction, and understanding human nature are invaluable. So, we encourage you to think like a detective in your daily life. Observe, deduce, and understand. And, of course, enjoy a good detective story now and then. Thank you for joining us today. 
We hope you found this conversation enlightening and entertaining. Remember, the world is full of mysteries waiting to be solved. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more engaging conversations. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep solving mysteries. Bye for now. The ultimate morning workout routine. What does Robert do every morning? Robert runs in the park every morning. Where does Fiona like to walk? Fiona likes to walk by the river in London. Can Robert jump high? Yes, Robert can jump very high. When must you stop at a traffic light? You must stop at a traffic light when it is red. How often does Fiona run? Fiona runs three times a week. Where is the best place to jog in New York? The best place to jog in New York is Central Park. What do you wear to run? You wear sneakers to run. Is walking a good exercise? Yes. Walking is a good exercise. Why does Robert stop running after 30 minutes? Robert stops running because he starts to feel tired. Can Fiona jump over the fence? No, Fiona cannot jump over the fence. What should you do if you see a stop sign? If you see a stop sign, you should stop. How long does Robert walk his dog? Robert walks his dog for an hour. Where does Fiona buy her running shoes? Fiona buys her running shoes in a sports shop in Dublin. Why is jogging in the morning beneficial? Jogging in the morning is beneficial because it energizes you for the day. What does Robert do when he sees a red light? When Robert sees a red light, he stops. Is it safe to run alone at night in the city? It is not safe to run alone at night in the city. How fast can Fiona run? Fiona can run very fast. Why do people wear jumpers? People wear jumpers to keep warm. What is Robert's favorite exercise? Robert's favorite exercise is running. Why should you stop and look before crossing the road? You should stop and look before crossing to avoid accidents. I hope these examples are useful for your English learning. Thanks for watching. Crucial tips for landing a job as an accounting officer or conversation between Paul and Beatrix. Hey Beatrix. How's it going? I heard you're applying for an accounting officer position. Hi Paul. Yes, I am. It's quite a competitive role, and I'm not sure how to stand out. Do you have any advice? Absolutely, Beatrix. First off, make sure your resume is top-notch. Highlight your experience and skills in accounting and finance. Great point, Paul. What about the cover letter? Ah, the cover letter is your chance to shine. Tailor it to the company's values and mission. Also, make it clear why you're the perfect fit for this specific role. That's insightful, thanks. No problem. Also, have you prepared for the interview questions? I've been going through some common questions, but what should I focus on? Focus on behavioral questions as they'll likely ask you about past experiences to gauge your skills. And don't forget to be familiar with some accounting software. Will do, Paul. Lastly, be yourself and show enthusiasm. Employers love applicants who are passionate about their work. Excellent advice, Paul. I'll keep all of this in mind. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Beatrix. Good luck. I'm sure you'll do great. Thanks, Paul. 
I appreciate your help. English on the go, vehicles, voyages, and more. Does Oscar have a truck? Yes, Oscar has a big blue truck. What color is Emma's car? Emma's car is red. Can we travel by ship from the USA to the UK? Yes, you can travel by ship from the USA to the UK. Why does Oscar like his motorcycle? Oscar likes his motorcycle because it is fast. How many people can fit in a minibus? Usually, a minibus can fit about 10 people. Is it expensive to take a taxi in London? Yes, taking a taxi in London can be expensive. What type of vehicle does Emma drive? Emma drives an electric vehicle. Do they use trucks to move furniture? Yes, trucks are often used to move furniture. Can I rent a motorcycle in Spain? Yes, you can rent a motorcycle in Spain. What is bigger, a minibus or a car? A minibus is bigger than a car. How long is a ship journey from Italy to Greece? The ship journey can take from 8 to 24 hours. Do you need a special license to drive a truck? Yes, you need a special license to drive a truck. Where can I park my car in New York? You can park your car in a designated parking area. Are minibuses comfortable for long trips? It depends, but some minibuses are very comfortable. How much does it cost to fill up a truck with fuel? The cost can vary, but it's usually quite expensive. Is Emma's motorcycle new? Yes, she just bought her motorcycle last month. What do you call a big vehicle that carries goods? A big vehicle that carries goods is called a truck. How do I call a taxi? You can call a taxi by phone or use a taxi app. Can you take a bicycle on a minibus? It depends on the minibus company's policy. Why do some people prefer cars over motorcycles? Some people prefer cars because they feel safer. Do trucks drive slower than cars? Yes, trucks usually drive slower than cars. What should I do if I miss my ship? You should contact the shipping company for assistance. Is there a seat belt in the taxi? Yes, there should be a seat belt in the taxi. How often does Emma use her car? Emma uses her car every day for work. What is a common color for a taxi? A common color for a taxi is yellow. Can a truck carry more than a minibus? Yes, a truck can usually carry more than a minibus. Where is the helmet for the motorcycle? The helmet is on the motorcycle seat. Do you need a ticket for the ship? Yes, you need to buy a ticket to travel on the ship. How many wheels does a car have? A car has four wheels. What is faster, a motorcycle or a minibus? A motorcycle is usually faster than a minibus. Why did Oscar choose to travel by ship? Oscar chose to travel by ship to enjoy the sea view. Can we take luggage on the minibus? Yes, you can usually take luggage on a minibus. What do I need to drive a truck? You need a truck driver's license to drive a truck. Is riding a motorcycle dangerous? Riding a motorcycle can be dangerous if you're not careful. Why are ship journeys longer than airplane trips? Ships travel slower than airplanes. Where is the nearest car rental? The nearest car rental is next to the train station. How much to hire a taxi for the day? The price to hire a taxi for the day varies by city. Can a motorcycle carry two people? Yes, most motorcycles can carry two people. What kind of ship is that? That's a cargo ship that transports goods. I hope these examples are useful for your English learning. Thanks for watching. Business Basics Turning Ideas into Income What is Money? Money is something we use to buy goods and services. 
How do we earn money? We earn money by working in jobs or running businesses. What is a budget? A budget is a plan for spending and saving money. Why is saving money important? Saving money is important for future needs and emergencies. What is a bank? A bank is a place where we keep our money safe. What does an entrepreneur do? An entrepreneur starts and runs their own business. How do companies make profits? Companies make profits by selling their products or services for more than they cost to make. What is an investment? An investment is putting money into something to make more money in the future. Why do people start businesses? People start businesses to make money and bring their ideas to life. What is a salary? A salary is the money a person earns from their job. What is marketing? Marketing is how companies promote and sell their products. How do you create a business plan? You create a business plan by outlining your business idea, goals, and strategies. What is online shopping? Online shopping is buying things over the internet. Why do prices change? Prices change because of supply and demand or economic factors. What is a loan? A loan is borrowed money that you have to pay back with interest. How does advertising affect sales? Advertising can increase sales by telling more people about a product. What is a customer? A customer is someone who buys goods or services. Why is customer service important? Good customer service keeps customers happy and returning. What is a credit card? A credit card lets you buy things now and pay for them later. Why do businesses compete? Businesses compete to attract more customers and make more profits. I hope these examples are useful for your English learning. Thanks for watching.